Man. So, guys, this is Sweeney here, and we are starting the Startup Jungle podcast. Today we have Ben Lang on. And Ben, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm 20 years old. Uh, I've worked at, at a few different startups. I've created a few of my own projects. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, and you're currently in Israel, which is obviously right. you know, pretty pretty unique. And from what I've read, you know, on your blog and a few other spots, is that it's a pretty thriving community over there. Mm -hmm. And what made you, because, you know, I, I saw the wonderful title, you know, from Silicon Valley to Israel, and, you know, you're even in the Army. What what made you want to go to Israel, first off? So, I, I mean, I'm originally from New York. Uh, I moved to Israel about two years ago. And uh, I decided when I was in high school that I wanted to move to Israel after to, to join the Army. And uh, because I'm part Israeli, and every every Israeli actually has to go to the army once they're 18, and I thought it'd be the best thing to do, and I thought it would also be a better education than college, um, because there's actually this book called The Startup Nation, which explains why there's so many startups in Israel, and one of the reasons they say is because of what you learn in the army, uh, and it's a completely different education than college, and teaches you other things that that have really uh, you know helped Israel thrive as a, a nation full of startups, and and I, I really wanted to be a part of that, so that's that's the reason I came here. Interesting. Um, so what, what it, you know, give me a little bit more insight because obviously, you know, I have, being from, I grew up in South Florida, so I have a lot of friends that are Jewish or have been to Israel, and I was actually talking to a friend yesterday when on Birthright, and he was like, you know, it's one of the greatest things I did, I was in Israel for a month, but as far as the army aspect to it, um, you know, how, how does that play into the startup community in Israel? So, um, I mean... The army aspect plays into it because I guess of uh, a few a few things like just what the amount that you learn in the army um, is just like amazing. I mean, there are different areas in the army. You can be in combat, you can be in intelligence, and they each just teach you different things. Like uh, if you're in combat, you can learn you know how to make quick decisions, how to work with a team, and do work under pressure. And these are things that you can see from uh, you can see like you know when you're building a startup, they actually are really helpful and. And these are sort of, like some of these things are things that are that Israelis are uniquely good at because it's experience that they learn in the army. And you know, if you're in intelligence, you could learn. You know, uh, you meet incredible programmers and you learn how to program better. And uh, on you work on projects that you can't work on outside of the army. Uh, just really like you know, amazing opportunities. And 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 also like the people that you. It's really you know, like just like in college, it's a great networking opportunity. So the army is really similar. You just meet amazing people. And and in Israel, a lot of uh, startups that are created are created by founders who were together in the army. Who served in the same unit and uh, and you know were worked together closely for three four years and it's it's like a bond that that's much different than anything else that you can have and and that's what you know creates a lot of these successful startups. And so on an education level, do you go to college as well, or is it you know say so when you turn eighteen, correct? Um, you mm -hmm. have to be in the army for is it two years, three years? For for females, it's two years, and for for males, it's three years. And what most people do is they go to, a lot of people go to college after the army when they're 20, 21. And, uh, yeah, I mean, three years in, in college, they finish, they start life a bit later than everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, but with a lot, you know, a much different experience than, than most people around the world. And, and not to uh, throw out a horrible pun, but would you say it kind of makes people more, you know, battle tested in the sense that they feel like they've experienced more things compared to just, you know, yeah. burying their head in a book and not really being, you know, practiced? Yeah, I mean the amount of like responsibility and, and experience, work experience, and uh, are things that you can't really you can't really get in other places. So I think people come out like they come out ahead um, definitely through by this experience. Very interesting. So I mean, kind of cycling back to that, you've been in. I saw you were in NYC not too long ago for about a week, and you were also mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley. What you know? What kind of? So I would say those are you know some of the three major. Um, you know, startup communities. What differences have you kind of seen between them, and what things are kind of similar? Because I feel like you have an interesting perspective, seeing how mm. you've been in each of them for a little bit. Um, I've actually been in a while for each of them. Yeah. I mean, I, li I lived in New York City, and I was in Silicon Valley for about six months. So, uh, I mean, I definitely, I definitely, I mean, uh, the biggest difference, I guess. Less, I mean, I guess something I already said, but it really just the people, the different types of people. Uh, in in all in in each different place, 
uh, the Israelis are much different than Americans, and the difference between people in Silicon Valley and New York is also, you know, pretty apparent. Uh, and also the types of startups, it's, it's different, different types of startups in each, in each place. Uh, I, I mean, Israel is, you know, they're very well known for being very strong in security and medical technology and biotechnology. Uh, and these are things that, you know, New York City isn't really well known for, but New York City is well known for media and, uh, and, and, uh, news sites and, and Silicon Valley is known for, you know, Facebook and Google and, and all the, Enormous uh, other startups that have come out of there. So it's just, it's just, it's definitely different. But then, and then there's also a lot of similarities. Similarities like uh, in Israel, there are startup events, multiple startup events every day, and a uh, booming community, and people are always trying to help you out of each other. And it's, just, it's pretty similar in Silicon Valley and New York City. So there are a lot of things that tie them together. Yeah, that is one of the most interesting and refreshing things about you know startup communities is it's such a very positive uplifting community you know and even with open source you know information data and whatnot there's a lot when it comes to helping other people compared to you know more of a dog eat dog competition aspect so um i noticed so you have the job at lol um lol vc how do what's the correct way to pronounce that is it just uh lul lul Lul? okay lul vc how did you you're, so you're doing that on, as well as the army? Uh, so I, I'm not actually working there anymore. Uh, okay. About a few months I stopped. A few months ago I stopped. Uh, but yeah, it was something I did while I was in the army. Uh, it was, it was it's a VC firm, mm-hmm. and what they what they have is uh, they have like an incubation team where they work on where they build startups. Uh, they they come up with ideas, they build them, and uh, and get them out there. And if they work, they bring in you know a, a CEO and a team and raise money, and they continue them. Uh, sort of similar. There's in New York something called BetterWorks, which is a pretty similar model. Uh, so I was on that incubation team, working working on growth with uh, with uh, these new ideas, uh, how to grow them and uh, you know, get more users and get traction, blog, you know, news articles, things like that. So what are you up to right now? Then are you kind of what's your what's your current focus? Uh, I mean now now um, uh, I mean really busy in the army and. Uh, and I'm working on uh, something called Mapped in Israel on the side. I saw that. I noticed that the Mapped in Israel, but hasn't that been going on for a little while now? Or because I was going to say it's not a not too recent. Or uh, how, how it's long ago did a, you start? About a year. About a year. And what was your uh, motivation for starting Mapped in Israel? Um, it was well, actually, New York City. Uh, New York City made this map of startups, and uh, I, I saw it, and that'd be a really good idea to have something similar in Israel. Mm-hmm. So uh, that that was like his inspiration, and I thought, uh, you know, this I want people to under, you know better connect with the Israeli startups, and I wanted Israeli startups to get better, w- more well known outside of Israel. And I thought that this would be a good platform for it. What kind of you know benefits have you seen directly from that? You know, from a networking perspective, or any? I mean, um, in terms any, of any, what? I mean, if people reached out to you, or you know, can you just go to general places and be like, "Oh yeah, I'm the guy mapped in Israel," or you know, how does how is that? Uh, yeah, for you? yeah. In Israel, it's definitely a lot. I mean, everyone knows it, uh, and also I've met a lot of people from outside of Israel who who have used it and come to Israel and wanted to meet up, like people from all over the world, from like South Korea and Vietnam and Japan uh, and America. All these people have used it as a tool to connect with startups and to come to Israel, and and uh, and it's really been amazing to meet them. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, I, I also noticed you had a post on how to message anyone LinkedIn, and this seems to be a kind of a connecting thing among your kind of growth hacks, is you're big on reaching out to people and doing it in you know, mm-hmm. kind of a crafty fashion, kind of a you know sniper fashion. You figure out their email, you send them something short and sweet, something valuable, and you've gotten great results from that. So where do you kind of see your best results? Because I thought it was interesting you mentioned LinkedIn, because it seems like a lot of startup people are on Twitter, but then reaching bloggers is probably best via email. Or have you had mm-hmm. good results with LinkedIn and Facebook as well? Or what's what have you noticed as far as uh, that goes? De- I mean, definitely best is email, uh, which which I also you know there are a lot of tricks for that which I really like. Uh, you know, using Reportive to guess people's emails and uh, uh, and Boomerang to schedule emails for the right time. And uh, there are all kinds of tricks you know to make sure that, that your email gets to the right person at the right time. Which, which I definitely think is the most important thing. And then if that doesn't work, I usually try Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, using other tricks that you can find, um, but definitely by far email. 
And I noticed, so at now, at this point, your uh, 10 marketing hacks, I have, I have a few questions on two of them, but, um, you know, it's about a year old. Is there any, you know, kind of major changes you've seen across them? Or I'll, I'm going to link in the show notes to the slideshow. I think it was really well done, so I don't want to, you know, completely just rehash it. But, <laughs> ha, ha, you know, have you seen any changes or any kind of, you know, if you had to add an 11th hack or if you had to remove a hack, is there any anything that comes to mind? Um, if I had to add uh, the 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 thing I posted recently on my blog about LinkedIn, I, I really like about how to uh, how to reach out to uh, people on LinkedIn. If there are other things I would add, there definitely are. Uh, but that would, I mean, I think I would just have to make a whole new presentation of new ideas. Is, is there any like specific things you're doing now that you know has been working well for you? You know, since that, they're kind of that are kind of new outside of LinkedIn. Anything you want to share? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like, well, you know, you said you'd make a whole other presentation, so I'm saying is there uh, really, you know one to two little? Um, <laughs> wow, well, I have a few new tools that are. Uh, one thing I really, uh, one thing I really like actually that I found recently was uh, this the script that you can that you can plug into your Gmail that will uh, it'll find all the the emails sent that you sent the last seven days uh, and see which ones weren't responded to. That's something I've always you know dreamed of having uh, because you send out all these emails you don't you don't know who's not responding you don't know how to follow up and stuff. Uh, so this is that's really useful. And what was is it? It's just a script or is it a certain thing you can grab somewhere? Or? Uh, um. Yeah. There's, there's something. There's someone who, who blogged about it. Uh, I think if you search like how to find someone replied to something like that, uh, how to find emails that no one replied to, it was something. It was something that I found. I saw on Hacker News. Gotta love Hacker News. And yeah. So do you want to? Can you go over that LinkedIn tactic for us real quick? The one you mentioned. Yeah. I know. I know yeah, it's on the sure. blog, but. Yeah, sure. Uh, so when you're messaging, I mean, when you're trying to reach out to people on LinkedIn, you can find you know really amazing people and, and not have, and then you have to pay to, to message them, which is kind of annoying. So one trick that uh, just someone told me about was if you actually join, a, if you look at what groups they're in and you join one of the groups, that you can message them through that group uh, for free, and then it'll just say, you know, hey, both of you guys are in this group, so he just messaged you, and uh, and then you'll um, you'll bypass. The, uh, the the paywall, the premium messaging service. Yeah, very nice. Um, so when you were you're talking about the ten marketing hacks, you mentioned share buttons, and I I remember hearing you somewhere you mentioned for the Facebook like button you can define you know what image, what text that shows up when people like it. You know you kind of have more control over that. Have you done anything else with Open Graph? Any other kind of hacks in a similar way? As far as um, with Facebook specifically, yeah, or just using their Open Graph platform, whether to you know pull demographic data, for example, or anything uh, so. So I mean, I did. Uh, I mean, I did this project, but uh, quite a while ago, like a year and a half ago. But it's not, it doesn't really help anymore. But uh, me and a friend, we we were we didn't. There was no way before Graph Search to find out. Which uh, which of your friends were in a relationship? To, like, just see a list of them, because yeah. uh, you you would see like you know, hey, uh, these you would just have to go into someone's profile to see if they're in a relationship. So we we actually built this tool that uh, I think it was called a relation. It was called relationbook.me, and uh, you would just log in and and, uh, and with Facebook, and, and you would see you would be able to like sort them by uh, single, engaged, married. But all this is irrelevant now that you now that there's graph search. Um, but that was probably the most, uh, f- I guess, Facebook-related uh, project we worked on. And I think we had like 50,000 people use it. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah. I see, too, you also mentioned posting to Hacker News. Have you had any success posting to Reddit? or? No, never tried. Uh, I mean, I heard it's just luck. Like, there's no way, to, no way to game it, and Hacker News is a little... I mean, it's also not so easy, but, you, you know, you can... Figure things out to, to help to get up on uh, Hacker News. And what are what are some of the ways to game Hacker News? Uh, I wouldn't call it a game. I would just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what are some more, of the ways to give yourself a better chance on Hacker News? Maybe that's a better way to put it. Uh, okay, uh, so I mean, you, I mean, it's usually good to submit something and then have a few friends upvote it. 
Uh, you don't want to send the direct link to the Hacker News post because then they can detect that. So you, what you do is you would send like news.ycomedy.com slash newest. You would send that to a few people, say, you know, look for number five, that's me, or this article, uh, and upload that. And, and then uh, and then once you get like five or six in the first 10, 15 minutes, you have, you have a really much higher chance of getting on the, on top of uh, Hacker News, and uh, but only if it's something relevant to the, the community. Um, otherwise, they're just going to download it. Do you do you normally for that, or do you ever do like you know show Hacker News my startup, or is it more? Like, I have done. Sh- I've done show Hacker News a few times for live. I had all these like random side projects. Um, like one of them was Relations Book, but I have a bunch of other ones that were uh, uh, that started on Hacker News with show Hacker News. Gotcha. And for you personally, you know, once you're done with the army, what do you? What's what's kind of next for you? Are you planning on staying over there? Are you thinking about coming back to New York or Silicon Valley or? I'm um, not sure yet. I want to. I haven't decided if I want to stay or go back. Definitely both are options. I know I want to build a startup, and uh, you know it depends on the opportunities. And ho- hopefully, he'll build, he'll build one with some friends from the army, and uh, we'll see what works best. Now, working, you know, kind of with the VC firm, did you learn a bit more about venture capitalists and kind of how the funding process works? Because I know that can be kind of a, a uh, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't really that involved in that because I was on their incubation team, mm-hmm. so I didn't really learn that much about uh, investments. Which I really wish I had. <laughs> and how did you how did you actually get that role? How did you end up there? So uh, what, what led to? Because you know, there's a lot of people out there. You know, maybe they want to learn growth or start doing some of these things, and it it kind of seems like a zero to sixty, like everyone's already doing it, or you know, they have no idea what they're doing. So you know, how did you just end up there? Um, so actually, <laughs> how did it start? I know that, mm-hmm. how did it start? I think, uh, I think we just must have seen, like, I think they saw me posting stuff on Hacker News and posting stuff on Facebook, and I think they just, uh, they liked it, I guess, and and that's how they got to, like, they told me, one, someone working there told me it would be a cool opportunity, so I took it up and I went there. So were you uh, doing but, anything before to kind of, Gain you authority, or yeah, I was doing a lot of blogging, a lot of blogging, a lot of. Uh, I had all these side projects that I was working on, like viral projects that I wanted to experiment and see what worked well. Uh, so I was definitely, definitely uh, working on other things. Yeah, I remember you mentioning a, a code school viral project that went really well. The what was it? Uh, coding for a year. Uh, like yeah, that, that wasn't mine though. That was someone else. No, well, I'm, I'm just saying oh. that was a mention of a viral, viral project. Do you have any other, you know, um, examples of viral projects? Because I think that's yeah, really interesting. Yeah, I think actually, I, like, I keep a whole list of them because I think they're they're really fascinating. I, I use Pocket to to keep track of you know interesting articles and interesting sites. It almost sounds so. like you need a viral project dot me where you just post them. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool actually. I There's mean, so I, many. I would check it out. I mean. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I have a whole list of, uh, I don't know, I'm looking right now at, uh, how much, how much to make an app.com, which is just a really nicely designed tool that tells you how much it costs to make an app. Or, uh, another, another one is, uh, let's see. <laughs> There's this one called, uh, Motherfucking Website, which is just funny because it's, it's not, it's not, it's just like plain HTML. It's not well designed, and they just rant about why uh, why you don't need to create beautiful design and text is fine. And <laughs> it's funny. Um, there's so many of them that you know, if you do something unique or something uh, something useful that solves people's problems, uh, and you do it right, it's not not too hard to go viral. So what else have you you know kind of? I saw your your Kickstarter. How to hack Kickstarter? Have you had experience, you know, helping anyone with Kickstarter? Or was this was that kind of just a case study on the uh, water filter company, or it was mostly about the water filter filter company? Yeah. And have you have you had thoughts about you know trying to run your own Kickstarter campaign, or you know, uh, no, not something, not something. I've, I mean, maybe in the future, but for right now, it's not something like uh, that. I have a project for because when I, I was at a recent uh, marketing conference, and I know that was. That was a big thing that came up a lot because you know, mm-hmm. they mentioned when it comes to investing, you know, they look at product, team, and traction. And one way you can kind of validate your product is through Kickstarter because you know you are actually 
getting users in a way, you're getting traction, you're getting them mm-hmm. people to hand you money. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you feel like that model is kind of changing changing the way you know certain startups work or you know what kind of money they have access to whereas they didn't before? Uh, I, th- I mean, I think it's just. I mean, I, I don't think that people are doing it more about the money. I think they're more doing it about the marketing. Like uh, the the fact that you can that you can sell out your product before it even launches is something that you know was wasn't really didn't really exist before Kickstarter, uh, and and that you can get so much you know so much validation for a product is like something that's really uh, really amazing, and it doesn't even, doesn't even cost you anything because people are paying for it, and and and, uh, and you know and the and Kickstarter projects get so much press, like the ones that succeed, they get so much press and. So much, uh, so many articles written about them and, and buzz and things. Those are things that are hard. I mean, Kickstarter has a huge, huge benefit. And a huge community as well. I know they mentioned, uh, yeah. I think Indiegogo is better. It works well for international, but then you kind of miss out on the Kickstarter community. Right. So some of the things you mentioned there, if you, you know, I guess to, if you were to run your own Kickstarter campaign is blogs, you know, relevance, readership, relationships, reach. You know, researching other top ten Kickstarter projects. You know, so what? Like finding out their swag, finding out what they did, or what? It, what exactly? When you're researching these other products, would you be looking for these other projects? Um, I'm mainly looking what what sites wrote about them, which blogs, uh, you know, which which influential people were tweeting about them, or posting about them, uh, and 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 if you know if it's something similar that, that would interest them. Uh, finding out a way to reach out to them. And now I, I noticed a lot of a lot of what you've done, you know, your kind of growth hacking seems to be a bit of a PR hacking almost, I would say, with mm-hmm. blogs and reaching out. Have you done any kind of paid advertising or any, you know, whether Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads, Twitter ads, for example? Have you? Uh, uh, I have, but um, not, I mean, <laughs> in the Army, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> You say so you've done paid advertising for the army, or yeah, but I'd rather not go into that. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So you haven't actually done any paid advertising when it comes to um, like you know your other for, traditional kind of startups and like, right. Startups yeah. With Hacker. Yeah. For for them, I never have. Uh, I've always been about doing it with the the most bootstrap budget possible. Gotcha. One of the, one of my favorite um, growth hack you know marketing hacks you had in the slide deck was, you know, kind of about the premium giveaways because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people forget about that. So do you mind going over that real quick? I have a little bit on it, but you're, uh, yeah. you, had, you had a story about the social bar, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Wibio is a company I worked at. Uh, okay. And what, what we did, what it was, was it was a, a, pre, a bar that you could add to your website and it would add all kinds of features like Facebook and Twitter integrations. Um, so so we had a premium product. We had a, you know, freemium um Model and and the, the the free version you know gave you a limited amount of features and then the premium version gave you much more uh, so and it cost I think a hundred dollars a year so one thing that we that I did a lot was uh, I would reach out to bloggers in the uh, bloggers that were in the blogging about programming or web design um, creating websites things like that those topics uh, with you know a good amount of readers and I would offer them. Let's say five licenses for Wibia, which each one is hundred dollars to their readers, and all they would have to do was post about it, and uh, someone and whoever, and then they would do whatever they wanted with it. They would give it to the commenter with the the best reason, something like that. And it was probably one of the best things that we did because it was it didn't cost us anything. We got tons of uh, tons of buzz on, on places that we usually wouldn't be able to because. Because uh, you know these these bloggers don't always write about these products, but now that we gave them value and gave them something to give away to their readers, they were much more likely to write about it. Uh, so I think it's a great tactic for for startups. And I, I wonder how that would work outside of a you know kind of software space. If you had to, I guess at, at, at even with a physical product, you know you can use it as a loss leader type model because the press you're gaining will make up for it. So, you can I'm, well, I'm, I'm saying for software, it's easy to, you know, hey, here's a hundred dollar product because it doesn't really cost you anything to right. give someone a login. But as far as like something like a physical product or something else in yeah. that space, or if you have a free product, 
I guess you could get yeah. away something branded that's still a value, you know? Yeah, yeah, they're kind of figure something out. Have you seen uh, New Relics t-shirts giveaway? T-shirt giving away? Or no? I'm not sure. No, what are they? Well, so New Relic is a company that I saw a lot on, uh, they actually advertise a lot on Reddit. And I've seen them do a lot of banner advertising, which is always hard to tell because you don't know if someone's remarketing you or if, you know, they're actually, how much they're advertising. But one of their big offers is they, you know, give away give away a free t-shirt in order for you to sign up for the service. And I don't even think you have to pay for the first month or something like that, but they give away a free t-shirt. And I noticed that's something that uh, a lot of marketers are mentioning is work, working really well because giving away a free guide, free ebook, something like that isn't doing as well as if you can give some someone a free actual physical product to sign mm. up. So I, I thought that was interesting, especially because they're, I forget how much in revenue they're at, but they're, you know, closing in on an IPO probably this year. So they're certainly not doing bad for themselves mm. while giving away free t-shirts that say Nerd Life. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was a pretty cool. That's awesome. I gotta check that out. Pretty cool marketing tactic. Yeah, I have, mm. I have, we have two blog posts on it coming out soon that I'll send you. Oh, out. awesome. Awesome. Because I, I, I just knew them as Hey, those guys that actually advertise on Reddit, and then I, you know, started doing some digging into the company, and I went, "Oh man, these guys are, these guys are serious." <laughs> That's awesome. So, do you have any, you know, on a closing note, because you are you're 20, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have any advice for you know younger people such as yourself that are trying to get more into the startup world, you know, get into the growth side of things? Because obviously, going to college, you know, doesn't doesn't cut <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> So how um, how would you recommend that? Because you mentioned that you were kind of blogging, and that's how you gained some notoriety. Mm-hmm. So what, uh, would you, what would I do? What would you I recommend? Mean, I mean, it depends where you are. But first off, definitely start um, definitely start reading certain blogs and and following certain people on Twitter to, uh, just to learn more. Like in that presentation, the, the slide the slides I wrote at the, the, the end, some of the blogs and people I would recommend following on Twitter, like uh, Kiss Metrics and Quick Sprout. Uh, there's some, I mean, there are blogs that are, I mean, they're big blogs, but a little less known, and uh, they're just really, really invaluable for just learning new things. And and then eventually uh, figure out a way to work for some for some company, uh, do something creative to get it to work there, uh, and 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 just learn on the way, and and then eventually start sharing the information that you've learned, and and once you share, people will start coming to you and giving you opportunities, and that's the best way, I think. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that it's it's funny because that's kind of what startups do is a lot of content marketing. So it's right. basically content marketing, but you're marketing right. yourself. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, have you ever thought about doing a you know kind of Udemy course or a Skillshare course or anything? I mean, that's kind of what Startup Jungle does as well. We mm. do courses on teaching, but have you ever thought about doing a course like that? Or uh, I never have. Maybe it'd be a good idea. <laughs> well, because I I could, for example, you know, you it seems like you're very good at connecting with people, you know, reaching out, connecting with people and bloggers and, and it, it does seem like you use a lot, you know, rap reportive and the, the very short emails, but it seems like you had a lot of examples and I could see where that would be a great, you know, even if it was only a $7 course, mm-hmm. like this is how I connect with people. I, I do this process. I figure out their email this way. This is these, this is an example of 20 emails I've sent out. I, I could see that being pretty useful. Really? Where, where would you do that on which site? Um, obviously I would plug Startup Jungle, of course, but, you know, any, any, any of these sites, you know, Udemy or, you know, any, any one of those platforms. Um, wait, what, how does it work on Startup Jungle? Startup Jungle is, so we publish, you know, information, sometimes in-house, sometimes from, you know, different developers, and it's, we focus on the marketing and business side of startups. Obviously you have places like Code Academy, Code School that have handled coding very well. So we focus mm-hmm. more on, you know, whether you're trying to get funding or, you know, growth hacks, marketing, and more business fundamentals. So that mm. that side. Oh, cool. All right, I'm going to check it out. But no, I mean, right. just just for you, not even not even trying to plug us necessarily, but just for you, mm-hmm. I, I mean, that is something I would look, I would read. So, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> so I think mean, I it seems like it's something you're very talented at and very skilled at, you know, even like the little LinkedIn hack, you know, I think it would be a good place for you to kind of put all that information together and if you could do it in a cohesive manner I could I could see it doing pretty well that is an awesome idea <laughs> so, yeah, I'm right. definitely going to think about that <laughs> well hey I all appreciate right. having you on uh, where can people yeah, sure. reach out to you and follow you and um, can email me 
Uh, you can tweet me. What's your, uh, what's your, what's your Twitter and uh, what's your main blog? Um, uh, ben LN. That's my Twitter. My blog is benlang.me. Uh, you can, con- there's a contact form also. You can email me. Uh, yeah, for sure. Keep in touch. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for being on today, man. And I All hope right. to uh, see that course come out soon. All right. <laughs> I'll let you know. Thanks for the idea. Good.